Hi and welcome to another episode of Making Things. Today I'll show you how to measure dozens if not hundreds of amps with just about any little multimeter with a small tool we're going to be building ourselves. Right. So what you're going to need to make this uh, 100 amp ammeter shunt is uh, most importantly some type of connection. I'm going to be using clamps. Uh, 13 or 14 inches of 10 gauge wire, copper wire, has to be copper, has to be 10 gauge. I mean you can do other stuff but then you're on your own. Uh, soldering iron, optional but helps with the different types of connectors. Strippers. The essentials. And uh, multimeter. So the way this works is we have this wire here which has a set resistance uh, and the way a shunt works is you measure the voltage at the in and out set of said resistance and whatever voltage drop you measure, so the voltage that is going to be right out on your multimeter, uh, is going to allow you to calculate the amount of amps that cause this voltage drop. Uh, it's known as, as voltage sag actually if you do any type of thing with uh, you know, electronic vehicles, bikes, uh, RC stuff. So the calculation to get this is the amount of volts we're going to measure is going to be equal to the amount of ohms times the amount of amps going through. Um, now in this case what we're going to be doing is making a coil here, so a shunt that has a known value of a very easy round value. So we're going to have one milli ohm. So that will mean that we're going to be able to read directly the amount of amps without doing any fancy calculations. Because if we have, you know, two amps, then we're going to have two millivolts. If we have a billion, we're going to have a billion millivolts. But then you're going to fry your thing anyways. And I don't know where you're getting that much energy. Um, so yeah, so essentially because it's base 10, it works great. And uh, you know, I was going to make a cheap jab at this, but I've been making shots for, for a couple couple months now since I've been playing with uh, more high current stuff than I have, I have been in the past. And uh, you know, the reason I didn't think of doing this and some guy, uh, I just want to give credit where credit is due, it's a Lucien, Lucien from RC. Yeah, RC Groups uh, came up with this idea. The reason it's, it's such a dead simple design is because I was using the volume of wires when I was calculating how to build my shunts. And it just so happens that if you just go with the gauge and inches, a uh, thousand feet of 10 gauge wire is one ohm. Or, you know, a tenth of a percent off Sorry, yeah, that's it. A tenth of a percent off from an ohm. Um, so a foot and a sixteenth is exactly one milli ohm. So <clears throat> the idea here is, yeah, that's it. It's that simple, actually. There's there's not much else to it. Um, it works just like every other shunt. It works just like the one I used, uh, you know, to to measure the current coming out of my spot welder, except that uh, this would probably have melted <laughs> but you know for anything that's not a spot welder pushing out you know nearly 400 amps um, this is great 100 amps and, and less and you're sure to be okay and you can probably push it past that actually because 10 gauge wire can do 30 amps no problem uh, at what 50 feet 100 feet so you know at a foot you can do 100 amps definitely you can probably push but then uh, the longer you leave it on the more likely you are to just wreck it start a fire so the first thing to do is just to straighten out uh, your piece of wire because you know if you got bends in there it'll be harder to get the right measurement but once you've got that done then you're gonna trim it uh, well, you're going to mark where the one foot mark is, um, strip the end, and then we're going to re-measure. 
All right, so this is approximately straight, and then a good way to make sure that it is actually straight is you roll it, and whatever end goes up, you have to bring it back down. So, I mean, this one was kind of obvious, but... There you go, that's close enough. So, first bit doesn't really matter, we're just going to strip about a half inch. So when we measure our foot, uh, so a 12, 12 foot and an, in, and an eighth is actually the one ohm mark, but we're never going to be able to get it perfectly up against the edge of the sheathing, so might as well just, you know, make an allowance for that tiny little deviation and just cut it there. The next thing we're going to want to do is just, uh, we've got these connectors, we're going to, yeah, it doesn't fit through the hole, so we're just going to crimp it and then uh, solder it together and do that at both ends. Once that's done, we'll have our connectors to plug into the circuit. All right, with the help of a little bit of movie magic, we now have uh, copper clamps instead of aluminium and our wire is now red. Uh, it already built these, so you know, I just went out and got them. Um, and so, what you're going to do is just spool the wire so that it's uh, kind of you know not in the way. But it, if, I mean, if you want to walk around with a long stick, sure, go for it. But you know, makes it compact. You can still move it. And the way, so the way we use this is we're going to have our multimeter set for the voltage. Uh, if you have one that uses a range, you're going to put it for the millivolts range. And so in order to test this, I'm just going to be using this 10-watt uh, flashlight I built. I really need to get some of these uh, leads with clips at the end. It'll be really useful. So we're going to interrupt one part of our circuit with our known resistor. And... Now the spot where we're going to be measuring with our multimeter is right at the edge of the sheathing because we made sure that it was just about a foot, well we made sure that it was a foot and since we know we need about a foot and an eighth you can even scoot it over just the tiniest bit and then uh, we're all set So there you go, what we can see is this is a half a millivolt, so it's half an amp. Now of course this device would have been able to measure an amp, uh, half an amp, but I don't have anything on hand right now that will pull a great deal of current. Let's see if I can find another example. And what I'm going to do this time is get something better to torque it out. Drill bill. A drill bit, it definitely can't handle. This one and a quarter inch auger. There's a breaker somewhere given out. There you go. 
10 amps, 15 amps. I would definitely not have been able to measure that with my multimeter since it's capped at 10 amps. It's got a, a fuse in there. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Well, I think we went up to just about 20 amps in there. But, uh, yeah, I kind of expected this to happen. I was surprised it didn't happen before, so I kind of stopped expecting it to happen. But, the magic smoke has been let out of these wires. They will no longer work. The magic is gone. Scared me there. For a second I thought it was going to be my, that was coming from my drill. So I didn't quite catch that peak, but as we saw, that went up to above 20 amps. And uh, yeah, there's no way, there's no way I would have been able to measure that with my multimeter. Um, and, oh, what? Alright, this is funny. It's melted to the side of the casing. Yeah, yeah, the, oh my, <laughs> the copper went into the plastic, and then, possibly part, oh, it did it down here too, and then possibly part of the reason, uh, you know, everything shorted, bam, <laughs> they melted together. <laughs> Well, that did its job, so I'm quite happy. It was worth it. So yeah, easy amp meter, dirt cheap, uh, under under two bucks. I think I got these as a pair for for just about under two bucks, and then this was just recycling. But even though, even then, you go pick it up at the store, nothing. Let's see, fine, we'll say under three bucks. Under three bucks to be fair. So still very affordable. Well, I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please like, subscribe, check out my Instructables to see the more details. Um, check out my channel, I'm gonna have more videos coming up, have a bunch of stuff, how to make, how to build. Uh, and uh, just as a courtesy as well, um, I put a link for Lucien's forum post, so if you wanna go see the original source of this, uh, he has a slightly different version of how he attached the coil but it's exactly the same thing in far as far uh, as how it works and uh, yeah that's it